Hi and welcome back to Sick Money, where we discuss all things related to finance. Today's topic is on performance slash return attribution, and we're going to use the Brinson Hood VBAL model for this. The learning outcomes for this video are you'll learn the formulas required to perform a return attribution, you'll learn how to calculate the portfolio return and benchmark returns. You'll learn how to decompose the fund excess returns into its components. You'll determine whether the fund excess returns are consistent with our expectations. And then we're going to wrap up with some final thoughts. So here are the formulas, the boring stuff. Um, so portfolio return, benchmark return, and then to decompose our excess returns, uh, Britain and Hood and Bbauer uh, put them into three effects, allocation effect, selection effect, and interaction effect and these are the formulas. But let's first um, deal with a number one and two, benchmark and portfolio return, which are pretty much similar. Just with different um, signs there, uh, different notations. Let's uh, go here. So so if we look here, WI RI, which is just a weight of I times return of I. So we've got a load of sector returns here, and we have cash. So it will just be the weight here times the return plus the weight times the return plus the weight times the return, and you get the thing. And we just keep going down the list. So in Excel, you can use the simple formula sum product. Ooh. So some product will do exactly the same as what we just said earlier. So in your first array, you select the returns of weight, sorry, and then you would second array returns, and that will give you a portfolio return, which is 9.1%. You do the same for the benchmark. You could just actually just um, drag that across, but for illustration purposes, if I just show you. So, some product, the benchmark weight, and then the second ray times the benchmark returns, on there. <coughs> and there we have an excess return of 2.06. So the next thing is to do is really, we need to decompose this into its allocation, selection, and interaction effects. So asset allocation, uh, stock selection, credit selection, so forth, and then we'll have a total effect of inter interaction and a total effect. So let's start off with an allocation effect. So this is according to the Brinton Hood VBAR model. So for allocation, we're going to go equals, we're going to take the weight of the communication service sector for the portfolio. We're going to minus the benchmark weight for that communication services. And then we're going to times it by the benchmark return for communication services. And we get 0.54. We'll just drag this down and this give us the total allocation. So we've got a total uh, allocation rate of 2.22%. So, let's take a look at that, and let's take this selection effect. Ooh. Pardon me. Okay, so selection. So, it's RI, the return of I, minus the return of, uh, for the benchmark, times the weight of the benchmark. So let's just um, do this. So we've got return of the portfolio for communication services minus 1.1. Then we're going to minus um, the benchmark return for the communication services. And then we're going to times it by the benchmark weight for communication services, which will give us the selection effect. Okay, we'll drag that down. And in this case, we have a negative selection effects, so subtracted from us. 
Now, let's see. Some of you be wise to look and say, hang on a minute. Um, we got a 2.06 excess return over the one year, but those two don't add up together. And you will notice, yes, you are correct. It comes to... One point five five per cent or six five six per cent of your share. So we're missing something, and that is the interaction between allocation and stock selection. So let's calculate this. So equals we've got the weight of the communication services, which is 12.3. We're going to minus the benchmark weight, which is 7.5. Then we're going to times it by the return, the uh, fund return for the communication sector, for the communication services sector, uh, services, minus the benchmark return for the communication services. And that will give us a number of interactions. Why is 0.6? Ah. Uh, just to show you that it all it will all add up to 2.06. Let's just sum all these uh, effects up from the total effect. Press that down, and there you go. are both 206 so there you go um, so on the last then I'll uh, determine whether the fund excess return is consistent with expectations so there's there's a number of ways you, you should look at this is one you should understand the funds philosophy the investment process um, the people how the team is structured and so forth um, maybe the style of the funds and so forth. And that will give you an understanding of where you are expecting the returns to come from. Um, for our case, we're just going to go through the name and say, you know, the alpha sect, uh, sector allocation fund. So the alpha should be coming through sector allocation. And as you can see, we have positive um, allocation effect um, and the stock selection is negative um, so you know most of the alpha or all the alpha is actually coming from uh, asset allocation or sector allocation so it all comes uh, from the name and we think you know it's doing good but you should look deeper into it. philosophy investment process team and so forth many other aspects to uh, see that um, uh, what you are coming out of the returns at the end are what you're expecting, um, you know, what you signed up for. So let's just do another example. And this is the Alpha Stock Selection Fund. So we'll hopefully see that, um, you know, this fund should be positive on the selection effect. Um, but let's do stock returns. So some product. And indeed, yes, we've got 2%, 2.09% um, excess return. So let's just take the allocation effect here. So it's useful so you can see the formula. So if we go equal. So we're going to, I'll do it on a different one. Just to, so let's take healthcare. So equal. The healthcare weight for the portfolio is 14.9. We're going to minus the benchmark weight for that, which is 15.2, and then we're going to times it by the return for the benchmark for the healthcare sector, which is 7.3.
I'm very well at allocating some sectors, but given it is alpha stock selection, you know, it's not uh, the key thing it should be doing. So, let's take the selection effect, use this formula here. So, we are going to take, let's say, the return of I minus return of B times the weight of B. So the return for the communication uh, sec services sector is 10.3 for the portfolio. We're going to minus off the benchmark return of 11.3 and then we're going to times by the benchmark weight for the communication services which is 7.5. Doesn't look promising so far. Yeah, negative, small negative there, but if you look at it overall, you know, it is having a positive selection effect. And again, we'll notice you know, this plus this is 1.29, so there's some missing part here, which is the interaction effect. So let's formula and then we'll show you how to calculate it. And it's quite simply the weight portfolio weight minus the benchmark weight for the communication sector uh, communication services and then we're going to times that by the return of the portfolio minus the benchmark return for the communication services. Yes, so you can see these two numbers here now equate to one another. And so let's determine whether we think, just from the name, uh, the Alpha Stock Selection Fund, um, the excess return, the, uh, the decomposition of the excess returns matches up. And as all, we see the, the selection effect is positive and all of it uh, over uh, the allocation effect is negative. Um, it's driving the uh, excess return. So, yes, it is a stock uh, selection fund uh, according to the attribution analysis we have here in front of us. So let's wrap up with some final thoughts. Uh, I think return attribution is an important part of fund selection um, and analysis, but it's only one component. Um, and I'll just mention one other thing. Um, this is the asserted way to the allocation effect. So we are using you know, the Brinson Hood b model. And that is one way to decompose excess fund returns into uh, these three components. There are other models, uh, which we won't discuss now, uh, but in other videos that I'll do, uh, we will compare um, um, performance attribution, the differences uh, to the Brinson Hood b model. And you'll see um, why it's different, and you'll then be able to choose uh, the model you prefer for your fund, uh, or how you prefer to do um, analysis. I'd like to thank you for watching the video and uh, if you enjoyed it please like it um, and subscribe if you want to watch more videos like this and you have a great day.